The second tooth we're going to be waxing is tooth number nine, the maxillary left central incisor. The left central incisor is going to be a little bit more challenging to wax because it's next to another wax tube. So we'll have to be very careful not to ruin number eight that we just waxed. So we have to make sure that as we're waxing, we're very careful in not melting the adjacent tube. So as we started with our waxing in the tooth number eight, we're gonna start the same way. We're gonna put a little bit of lubrication on it and we're gonna take most of it off again so that the wax doesn't become too slippery and keep coming off from the dye. So as we started with the number eight tooth, we're going to start the same way with number nine. And then we're going to put a wax coating over the dye and try to make it evenly as you can. Shouldn't be too thick or too thin. If the wax is too thick, we might run into an issue with shaping of the tooth because it might be out of uh, the borders of the tooth. If we make it too thin, then we run the risk of breaking the wax off while we are waxing the tooth. Again, pay attention to where it's a little bit thin and we're going to add a little wax in those areas. And just remember when we put the die back into the model, we mustn't push from the incisor when we push it into the model. We should hold it from the labial and from the lingual with the two fingers and then push it in until the um, margins are below the margins of the jet. So once again we start with the point angles. We remember the point angles delineate the um, corners of the central incisor and it will give us an idea where to end the incisor edge and where to have the line angles on the mesial and distal surfaces meet the incisal edge. So when we're building the wax, we can slowly blow on it and drag the wax so that it doesn't collapse on us. So as we see, this is about where we want the point angles to be in the tooth. 
and the incisal edge will connect the two point angles. And the incisal edge will be in itself a line angle which is called the incisal labial line angle. Now I might sound like I'm repeating myself with describing these things tooth after tooth, but that's for a reason. That's so everyone can remember the names of these angles as soon as we refer to them. Without names to these structures of the teeth, we would not be able to describe them or converse with the doctor about the specific parts of the tooth. Now we're gonna start with the distolabial line angle. So we remember that the gingival portion of the tooth is narrower than the incisal portion. So we start at gingival area and we're going to drag the wax all the way up to the distal and end it at the line angle. I mean end it at the point angle. You can see everybody can make mistakes, so if you find a mistake, you can point it out, and then everyone will learn. So, as we see, the distal line angle on the uh, incisor, it has a slight, because the incisal portion of the tooth is wider than the uh, cervical portion. Some teeth are rounder, some teeth are more straight, but in either case that will be true of the teeth. The incisal portion 99% of the time will be wider than the cervical portion. So on the mesial part of the tooth, the line angle is slightly less curved. Nevertheless, it will also be it will also have a curvature to it so that this portion is maintained narrow here on the gingival and this portion will be wider so as we see here we're going to add the gingival portion of the tooth and we'll bring it out about the same amount as the gingival tissue. And this portion is called the height of contour. You can also refer to it as the gingival third because this is one third of the tooth since we divide when we refer to the different areas of this tooth, we we'll divide the tooth into thirds so that we can refer to this as the incisal third, this area as the middle third, and this area as the gingival third.
You may have noticed that as we are waxing portions of the tooth, we notice that we are already gaining the shape of the adjacent tooth. This framework, as you can say, allows us to more easily fabricate a tooth closer to shape to its adjacent because we are not waxing it all at once but we're creating it part by part the way we're creating it is very similar to how nature creates it nature creates a tooth out of oops in the centrals and laterals and as a matter of fact all the anterior teeth we have the mesial lobe we have the central lobe we have the distal lobe and we have the lingual and we'll create the cingulum So after we created these four parts, the incisal edge, the mesial line angle, the distal facial line angle, and the ginger area, we're going to create the central lobe by just adding another ridge right in the center of our framework. So the lobes are more or less similar in size, so we're going to increase the size of the mesial structure that we waxed and we'll make it join the central lobe. And we'll do the same on the distal structure. And we'll have it join the central lobe. Once we had this joined, then we'll notice that we actually created some groove between the mesial, the central, and the distal. Those are called developmental grooves, or in the case of anteriors, developmental depressions, since they are not literal grooves. And if we did happen to make grooves, what we're going to do is we're going to fade them out slightly, melt them into each other, so that we create little depressions. And like we saw with the other tooth, the depressions create an irregularity in the surface of the tooth so that it gives it a natural look. These depressions should not be even, they should be kind of randomized slightly, but still with a specific structure to them to delineate the three parts of the two. So they don't need to be exactly in the same place because that would make them look too unnatural, like if it was built by someone. So, Generally, nature creates a semi-randomized, rounded type of structure. Nothing's ever geometric and sharp. So here, we just have to pay attention to the length of the incisors. The length are, are important to uh, make it as similar as we can so that the patients will have a pleasant outlook on them. Most people don't like one central longer than the other. There are very rare instances 
which it may be necessary but uh, in general we want to make them as close to the length and length so the width here should match the width there and the length should match um, as far as shapes are concerned we can in shape we don't have to make them 100% the same but they should look sufficiently similar so that when we're talking to somebody we don't draw attention to the dissimilarities but rather draw attention to the similarities now we're going to flip this around and we're going to continue with the mesial lingual line angle The mesiolingual line angle is also part of the mesial lobe. The mesiolingual line angle is referred to as the mesial marginal ridge of the central incisor. Now we move on to the distal lingual line angle and be sure to create that kind of S-shaped curvature to it just like we did on the labial surface. Now we have to remember that we must wax these marginal ridges to an even level with the adjacent tooth. If we don't, the patient's tongue will feel the difference in height and level and they will feel very annoyed by it. It's like when you have like a a tooth that broke or something like that and your tongue keeps going to that rough area where the tooth is irregular and it keeps playing with it so eventually you are going to have to go to the dentist and have it repaired so that you're not so annoyed by the feeling of an irregularity Now in some places where the wax kind of over melted or something like that, we're, we're going to fix that later when we take the cell to uh, repair the margins. If we notice, um, the anterior teeth sort of have concavities or dips in them. That's most of the anterior teeth is true. Um, sometimes the canines don't have that depending on the person. Sometimes it's very convex with the canines. But the uh, central and the lateral incisors it's mostly true. So we're going to smooth out lingual aspect we're going to blend everything nicely together sometimes if you have like little things in the wax you can always take your instrument and kind of scoop them out and then just replace the wax Then if we want to, and we want to mimic the original shape, then we're going to place some ridges on the lingual of the uh, incisors. And these should be placed very carefully so that the wax is not overheated. 
if you overheat the wax it will, will run and your little ridges will run together. And like I said, you don't want to make them 100% the same. So we could just make little ridges and blend the uh, grooves together a little bit. This would be called the lingual pit right there because the two just meet there. There could be a distal and a mesial pit if you like. But in our project that's uh, voluntary. If you want to do it, you can do it. If you don't want to, that's okay too. I just want to make sure we have the mesial, the distal and we have a singular. Mesial marginal ridge, distal marginal ridge, distal marginal ridge. And then we have the incisor, incisor edge. If you want, like this tooth has a little wear facet, which means when you get older, as you use your tooth, you're going to wear it. So sometimes you get like a flat surface or facet on the incisor edge. And I kind of like it on this model, so I will mimic that on the adjacent tooth. Just widen it lingually a little bit and make like a surface there. But as you widen it, you will also have to blend that area in which you added. Then we can pop it out. As you notice here, we have a, uh, an area which we melted together with the adjacent tube. If we don't cut that and we try to pop this out, it might break off this area. So to avoid that, you can take any kind of razor blade or something like that and kind of cut it away. So that when we take the tooth out, we can just separate the two teeth. Oops. So as we can see, we separated adequately. And now we have these irregularities. And what we're going to do is Last time we're going to fill them in. What we don't want to do is bring them further in. So what I like to do is I like to actually take this in to the margin of the die. So you kind of put your instrument against the die and slowly can shave the wax back until it's the same height as the die. A lot of times we'll still have these irregularities here and we're going to fill them in. And as I said before, do not overfill them, just fill them to the same level. And do not go over this margin. If you go over that margin, you'll have to carve back the wax. If you don't carve it back, the wax in that area will be so thick that it will pop the uh, die out of the model because the rubber in the model 
we'll squeeze on it and pop it out. And the same thing may happen to a crown if you over contour the crown. Over contouring means putting too much volume in an area where it's not supposed to be. So as our model is made out of rubber, it's kind of flexible. It's very similar to the gums in the mouth. So when the doctor will try the crown in, the gum might actually squeeze the, put a squeeze on the crown and it will keep popping it out. So it will be very annoying for the doctor to try in the crown without cement. So what we have to do is like you see what I'm doing, slowly take away the wax until it matches exactly this margin line. And it has to be perfectly nice and clean so that when you run the instrument across it, it doesn't catch. And the height of contour here, as we can see, it should not be this far out. So we can kind of round it a little bit. Do not flatten this area down totally. Because what happens if the crown is too flat, the food will not be going over the gums, but it will start getting packed into the gums. This is our contact point here, contact area. So it should be about two millimeters by two millimeters, and it should be located right on the line of the incisal and middle thirds so it would be up here where the middle third and the incisal third meet so it's right there and similar similarly it should be on the mesial also now if you're having trouble creating a mesial contact or a distal contact we can add a slight amount of wax here, like so. And as soon as the shine goes away, you see it's shiny. That means it's set, but it's still soft, so we can kind of squeeze it in there. And we're going to create a contact area right here. your contact area and if you create like a little, little bit of an irregularity because you have to add too much to the contact we're gonna we're going to fill this little area here can do the same on the distal. And looks like this tooth is a tiny bit short, so we're going to increase that in the length slightly.
since we had wax what I'm doing is I'm kind of blowing on the wax so that it solidifies as I lay it down now we have more or less uh, the same length of the centrals again and we're going to refine the inside of edge we can refine the areas where we added the wax and then we can flatten it with an instrument any kind of a, an instrument with a straight cut will do we want to add a little more concavity to this tooth in this area and you can see the um, marginal rip as it gets towards the incisal so I personally like to kind of make the marginal ridges a little bit thinner up here versus down there we carved it we can use some heat to round out the areas since mother nature likes round structures as we can see in this area here this is a little bit higher in height than this marginal ridge. So what we're going to do is we're going to lower the height of that tooth. And then as we lower the height we're going to also have to carve a little deeper on the, on the uh, lingual portion so that we can scoop out this area a little more to make it match with uh, number 8 Done that, we can take it and add some heat, make it rounder, add some heat here, just smooth it out. Again. And if we want to, we can further smooth out the labial portion.
here are our two central incisors completed. Now the first portion of the class will include number six, number seven, and number eleven. So the next tooth will start with the laterals. All right, guys, I hope that you got a lot out of this video. I think that the central incisors are some of the most challenging teeth to wax in the human dentition. So let's mind what we heard during the video and wax number nine.